Let's talk about masking out objects as we walk below them and behind them, like this. We're using Dither. There are a lot of tutorials on how to use Dither to do this. I'm, uh, I'm going to teach you some stuff that those tutorials don't generally cover, like how do you make your shadows work? How do you not hide the floor? How do you make it respond to zoom well? All of these things are pretty easy if you know how, and almost impossible if you don't, because Google shits the bed these days, so they're hard to search for. Now the shape I have chosen is a cylinder. I've put a cylinder around the camera, and the cylinder radius reaches out to the player. So that means that I end up with this really big cylinder being carved away. Now this works for my game, because I'm doing a ship game. If the player walks down into the depths of a ship, I want to get a cutaway feeling for the rest of the ship, like a toy or a model. That's on purpose, but your game might be better off with different shapes. Maybe you want a sphere around the player that reaches towards the camera. Maybe you want a screen space texture that alphas away like a tunnel down to the player. It's up to you to decide what shapes you want. Once you understand the math, you should be able to do the math on the shapes pretty easily. Also note that not all of my materials have the same fade away. This wall here fades away at one height, but the metal windows fade away at another height. See that? And as we go up the stairs here, you can see that they fade away at a different height because our height is changing. So how do we do all of that? Well, first you have to actually set it up to be masked. So every material that you're going to want to fade away, you're going to want to set up to be masked. Blend mode, masked, pretty easy. That will unlock this opacity mask, and then you can pass values in. If you just pass flat values into that, it will cut off very, very sharply, and that will look very distracting. So most people choose to use this Dither Temporal AA node, which is built right into Unreal. That's what creates that soft edge that you saw. It's still always either opaque or transparent, but the Dither makes it opaque or transparent you know, in pixels, so it really looks soft. This, of course, is the function that we're using to actually do the math. If you've never created a material function before, it is very easy. Just go to Material and select Material Function. These are very powerful. You should just get used to using them. They can take arguments in. So obviously there's some default values, but I can override those default values per material, so I can have materials that are more or less resilient to fading out. I find that to be great. Here's what the material function looks like. This might seem overwhelming at first glance. It's actually very straightforward, and I'm going to walk you through it. The thing we're going to need to do first, though, is uh, get the location of the player. We need to have this passed in every frame, and some people don't know how to pass that in, so we're using a material parameter collection, an MPC. You can create those by going into Material and selecting Material Parameter Collection. There it is. The beautiful thing about these, you can set them up with however many parameters you want, and then you can set these parameters anywhere. They're global. Uh, they're local to each client. They're global. So that means that every player in a multiplayer game gets their own material parameter collection, but every material they have uses the same material parameter collection. You don't have to track down the materials. You don't have to track down the objects. You just set this value, and everybody that takes this value in gets it. We're doing that here in Custom Player Controller. Every tick, we get the location of the player, and we pass it into the parameter. See? You can do this anywhere. I'm doing, I'm doing it here on the player controller because it's already set up, but uh, you could do it on the pawn or wherever. It, it doesn't really matter because it's global. Once you've got that value being fed in, we can use that value to determine how big our cylinder needs to be and how high our floor needs to be. So here's the floor down here. We get the z-coordinate of the player, and we compare that to the z-coordinate of the pixel that we are rendering. It's that easy. Because our player's base is at their toes, we add a little bit so that it brings it up to you know more like their waist, and we make this a, a property so that each material can have a different waist height. That's why the metal goes higher than the wall. It just has a higher waste point. So that's it, right? If it's a 1, or you know higher than 0, then that means that it's below the player and definitely needs to be rendered. If it's below 0, that means it's above the player and should be hidden. 
negative values are hidden and positive values are shown. It's that easy. We then do a little bit of remapping. This creates a 20 centimeter dither. Now we don't clamp this, but we do want to make sure that this 20 centimeter dither lands all of our values into the nice dither AA node, this here. We want this to have values between 0 and 1 for everything that needs to be dithered. So that's what we're doing. This is a 20 centimeter dither range. So we find out where the player's waist is, and we dither everything nearby that, and we hide everything above it, and we show everything below it. Show the floor, hide the roof. Up here is the other shape. This is a cylinder. We take the XY coordinates of the player and the XY coordinates of the camera, and we create a radius, right? So that determines how fat our cylinder is around our camera. We then increase the radius by some arbitrary amount so that we can, you know, not just cut off at the player. Then we find the range from the pixel to the camera, again, just XY. And if that's inside of our cylinder, it's below zero. And if it's outside of our cylinder, it's above zero. So we just subtract them. And again, same remap. It's just very straightforward, right? What this means is that we now have two shapes. Each of them has a value below zero for things that need to be hidden and a value above zero for things that need to be shown. So all we do is we take their max. If either shape wants to show something, it gets shown. Both shapes have to want to hide something so that it gets hidden. So that means that even though we're trying to hide everything above the player's feet with this, we actually only hide the things that are within this cylinder. Similarly, even if this cylinder wants to hide everything down to the depths of hell, we stop at the player's feet. Pretty basic. We then clamp this, but notice that we don't clamp it to 0 to 1. The reason for that is that the temporal AA, this bad boy here, uh, it can get shimmery at exactly 0 and exactly 1. So we go ahead and we punch above and below that to force the dither to work in our favor. The last thing we do is we take care of the shadows. This shadow pass switch is built right in. You don't have to worry about programming anything. Just plug in this node and you will be able to have shadows that don't get dithered away. Trust me, uh, this is what's causing all of your shadow problems. Just put that in and it'll get fixed up right away. Passing in a one there is just fine. And that's it. That's all of the dithering we need to do. It's not that complicated. I think it works great. Uh, I'll probably refine it a little bit, but this is perfectly fine for as it is, and it covers a lot of things that don't normally get talked about. It's completely resilient to zoom. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and have a great day.